So good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Mary, for, for your yes. So she hears it, and she's the first to receive the saving act of the Spirit of God. She's the first one, the new Eve. She's the one who says yes to God's plan. You got to say yes to God's plan. You cannot be a passive receiver. You have to say, yes, I believe. I receive the Spirit of God. I believe the identity that you've given me, and I believe by your power I can walk in that identity, and I can fulfill the mission that you've given to me. And so Mary responds, and she's teaching you and me, don't miss this. The church brings Advent to us. We walk in Advent because she wants us to live the story. We're living in the story. And each one of us has to say, be it done unto me according to thy word. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in ago doesn't exist five years ago doesn't exist you proclaim this a new moment of anointing right now for each of us God you see the broken part of us you see the struggle within us you see those things that we've been battling with Lord and we release our white knuckles from control on them right now Jesus and we invite you to help us do that we surrender lesser things for greater here God and we desire we desire your spirit to flood us. We who are temples of your Holy Spirit, we just invite you, God, to anoint and flood and fill us. And we turn it to you in praise. We proclaim this a new moment, a new anointing. We receive you, Jesus. We glorify you. We praise you. You are the way maker. You pave the path. The voice crying in the wilderness makes straight the way of the Lord. Lord, you, you pave that path from this moment into eternity with you, we receive it. You are the way maker, miracle worker. You're the promise keeper. You're the light in the darkness. That is who you are. Open our eyes to see you, Jesus. We receive you.
was they were never so close to God as they were during that time in the desert. God provided everything for them. Manna, quail, water. They were close. Once they crossed the Jordan into the promised land, however, they began to fall away from God. They began to worship false gods. They began to realize, well, maybe we don't need God. We have the promised land. They forgot the person that gave them the promised land. And I think that there's a a parallel to our society today. Have we forgotten who has brought us to the promised land? Have we forgotten that God calls us to repentance and renewal? Do we need God anymore? Do we want God anymore? Some would say our society has turned its back on God. Some would say that we as a people have just said, we don't need you anymore. Or we don't want to do what you want us to do or what we're called to do. We want to do what we want to do. And there's the problem. Because everything that we have, every gift, every talent, everything that we have comes from him. And to turn our back on him who gave it to us is not right. John was trying to get the Jews to realize that only out in the desert could they be closer to God when they gave up everything. John gave up everything. He lived in the desert. He ate wild locusts or wild honey and locusts. He gave up family. He gave up friends so that nothing would stand in the way of his becoming closer to God. What about us? What are we willing to give up to be the messenger of Christ? What are we willing to do to grow closer to God? God is calling us to repentance and renewal just as surely as John the Baptist was calling Israel to repentance and renewal 2,000 years ago. How are we going to answer that call? In a moment, I'm going to bring Christ body, blood, soul, and divinity down here so that you can come forward and you need to answer him for yourself. 